like you're having a great time. I am. This place is great. Ah, but have you enjoyed it from the roof? Why would I go to the roof? There's nothing up there. Well, I beg to differ. I have it on good authority that it offers a most excellent view that I'm positive will only become more enrapturing with your presence. If nothing else, allow me to offer a quieter refuge for us to talk. You talk far too much, but you're sweet. So be my tour guide for the night. Oh, I need to grab my purse real quick. I'll meet you up there. I'll hold you to it. Sorry to keep me waiting, Marcus. <laughs> I don't remember telling you my name. How did you... Hey, you're not... <laughs> Jethro, on behalf of humanity, I do hope this call isn't to tell me that there is yet another victim. I see. We'll be there straight away. Very well then, Mr. Palmer. Let's clear up. We have to make room for one more. Yes, sir. Well, I guess they won't be making a pie out of this one, huh? Mr. Palmer, sometimes I worry about your sense of humor. The man's name was Marcus Weinbridge, boss. What can you tell me, Doc? Temperature and amount of discoloration lead me to believe that the time of death is within the past 12 hours. Of course, nothing's conclusive until he's an autopsy. Jethro, not only is this our first male, but unlike the previous three victims, his jack-o'-lantern mark is not carved, but rather a tattoo. Also, take notice of these numerous puncture wounds here. I doubt he picked these up in the fall. Nor do I believe it was self-inflicted. Someone else was with him on that roof last night. Oh, that's a good one! Nah, too much work. Ha! <laughs> now that is incredible! All right, Tony, I'll bite. What has you tickled, Peach? Pink. Right. Pumpkin carving. It's a Halloween tradition. I'm looking for some ideas for this year. You have strange customs carving these John O'Lanterns. Jack! O lanterns. See. When Musad carves with knives, it wasn't on produce, Tony. It's art. Yes. Now that's a classic. I'm definitely going to carve that one this year, because I find time to do it. Dinozo, if you don't tell me more about Marcus Weinbridge, I will personally make sure you have permanent free time. Sorry, boss. Weinbridge was 32. He served as a petty officer back in 2009 for one year before being discharged due to bad conduct. The clean record be on that. His address placed him just outside of Arlington, Virginia, where he lived by himself. He had a job as a short-order cook at a restaurant called Buckles Pizza. I can taste their Thai pie now. Coconut on pizza. Who knew? 
Anyway, bank records show he spent a lot of money at the different art stores in the area. Maybe he's a cook and an artist boss? Are we dealing with another Martha Stewart? Uh, but boss, I just finished going through this guy's phone records. Well, within the past month, he's called the three other victims we've found. Good pizza, or was that a good pizza? Well, it appears your candle isn't so dim after all, Tony. I enjoyed my great pizza. I don't see that happening anytime soon. For a guy who spends a lot of money at art stores, he sure doesn't have much to show for it. Maybe it was a recent hobby. Then again, he could at least have something to show that a person lived here. Is this the right house? What did I say about trusting me? This just proves I shouldn't trust you. And you wonder why I wanted to go with Gibbs to talk with the families. Nah, Gibbs works better when he goes solo. Besides, he's missing out on the real fun. David. Close to Halloween. We're in an abandoned house. That means there's only one place we must go. Basement. <laughs> Agent Gibbs, I was wondering if I could talk to you about your daughter. I wanted to ask a few questions about your wife. I came to talk with you about your sister. Oh, of course, Agent Gibbs. Please, come in, won't you? Interesting tradition, carving pumpkins, Mr. Palmer. As a matter of fact, it was a tradition that started in Ireland and Scotland. Instead of pumpkins, the carved vegetable of choice was turnips. Really? So why did they carve the faces? Uh, that stems from folklore. The story from my boyhood was, oh, what do we have here? Metal and wood fibers aren't part of a pumpkin's makeup, Doc. I do believe you are correct, Mr. Palmer. Take this to Abby to analyze, and when you return, I shall regale you with the tales of Jack and the Devil. Can't wait! Excuse me, can you tell me where I can find Special Agent Gibbs? I'm sorry. Uh, boss is out for the moment. Is there something I can help you with? Sure. Agent... M McGee. A Agent Timothy McGee. Tim. <laughs> right. Well, I have some information about the incident outside the club. And maybe some video? M may I? Thank you for coming here. Any information you have is greatly... I guess I should have mentioned that the video capture on this phone can be a bit wonky. I'll see what I can do with it. But for now, why don't you tell me what happened, starting with your name, please? Ava Pierceman. Wait, I... wait a minute. I know that name. Did you receive a phone call from this number? Yes! Several times! Really annoying. Do you know who it is? It was him. The guy at the club. The guy who's dead now. He called, didn't he? Tell me everything, starting with the first phone call. definitely lives up to its creepy expectations. Keep an eye out for Buffalo Bills, Steve-Doc. Let's see what's behind door number one, shall we? Now we know why he was spending all that money at art stores. Scrapbooking? <gasps> carving. Lots and lots of carving. Pumpkins, 
really got me craving some pie. That's wrong on so many levels, Abby. You should be craving towel. Oh, nice one, Timmy. How about this? E to the X, DX, DX. E to the X, DX. Seeking tangent, cosine, sine, 3.14159, 2.71828. Come on, guys, let's integrate. I will separate you two. Oh, Gibbs, math is fun. Don't deny it. Dougie said you had something for me, Abby. You know, Gibbs, for a gourd, you could stand to be a lot more well-rounded. Abs. Duckman gave me something sweet, Gibbs. There were metal and wood fibers in the puncture wounds of Marcus's body. And based on the specific cut it made into the body, combined with the fibers, I can tell you that Marcus is stabbed by a carving spoon. A carving spoon, spoon like the one we found in Marcus's house. Good work, Abs. Boss, I don't want to kiss her or anything, but we brought the evidence. Mm -hmm. There's more. You interrupted her. The only reason you're not getting a head slap, Donozo, is because I don't have hands. Go ahead, Tony. I'm still waiting on something. Well, this isn't the only tool we came across. The guy has hundreds stashed away in his basement closet. The man also kept a photographic record. In here are photos of the other women before and after their death. There are several other unidentified women in here as well. That's the woman that came in here today. Ava. She said she was getting calls from an unrecognizable number about a week now. It turns out it was Marcus who was calling. Hold on to your pencils, McGee. I believe I have what we're looking for. That thing I was waiting on was the analysis of the anomaly found in the fibers. Marcus's killer must have been an amateur carver. Plus, they were probably rushed to finish them off. But they were using the double-sided spoon. They forgot the both in for sure, and they stabbed themselves, too. I was able to separate the DNA, and I had the name of our killer, Amanda Swissel. She was one of the women photographed by Marcus. She's also the other woman in the club. Agent Gibbs, I'm assuming this is in another interview to talk about my sister. No, no it's not. This is about Marcus Wanbridge. He was your sister's killer. He also killed these women. He'd call them, trail them, and then he'd kill them. You were on his list. Before Jamie. He called me before he ever called my sister, only he played the game differently, and we went on a few dates, nothing serious. I I went to his place. I was trying to surprise him, but when I got there, he wasn't alone. There was a woman screaming in the basement, but he already heard me. I ran, but not before, but not before seeing him covered in blood. I knew what was going to happen to me, and I ran out of this town. I thought I was safe. But then he went after my sister, and he called me while he was torturing her. Why didn't you come to us? We could have stopped this. And let this man go to prison and give him a chance to live? Even if he did get a death sentence, I wouldn't give him the satisfaction. He's anything but humane. So the solution was simple. I had to make sure he was dead. Oh, Gibbs, I'm just so excited that you decided to help me out with my pumpkin project. Oh, it was nothing, Amy. And please, just call me Jethro. Hey! What's going on here? I thought you said you supported Gibbs and Abby. And you even had a good work Abby kiss and everything. No, not now. Not while I have him. Please, just go. And tell Denozo to not interrupt if he can help it. Oh, Gibbs, you look so beautiful when you're all lit up. Kiss me, you silver-haired fox. We're all set up an autopsy. Did you see anything? I did not see you playing with your pumpkins. Good. <laughs>